Welcome back everybody to part 15 of our Unity Beginners tutorial series. In this video we're going to make our enemies go out in style by adding death animations. Before we crack on though, don't forget to download the sprite sheets required from the link in the description below. Once you're all ready, let's crack on. First, let's add and prepare the new enemy death sprite sheets in our sprites asset folder. I'm sure you're familiar with how by now, mine are already prepared as you can see, but here's a refresher if you need. Once you've import your sprite sheet, set the sprite mode to multiple and pixels per unit to 64. Hit apply and then go to sprite editor. Here we can split them up into four by going to slice, grid by cell size, pixel size 64, 64, hit slice. Then you can name each one, whatever names you like, whatever it's easiest for you. And when you're happy, hit apply. Now, before we animate, I would like to apologize for getting too ahead of myself as I wanted to show you how to use the animation component we added to the enemies in the previous video to manage their animations. For consistency, I realized it's best to stick with methods we've already done using the animator component, which is automatically added when creating animations. Highlighting both enemies, please remove the animation component but do not worry, it will not affect any of the work we've done. And to make it up to you, I'll dedicate a video on using the animation component in the future. Sorry about that guys, please forgive me. I'm only human. Now let's get animating. We're going to do the same process as last time. So let's just select the animations folder, click on an enemy, let's go with orange first, hit the animation tab and where it says orange walk, hit the drop down and create new clip. Making sure you're in the right assets folder now, animations, go ahead and name the clip, whatever you like. I'm gonna call it orange def. There we go. Then go to our sprites and all we have to do is put the death sprite one on first frame and death sprite two on the second frame. Change the sample rate to four frames a second Hit the record button and play to test it out. And there we go. That will do for our death animation. He closes his eyes and he squirms and kicks his little legs about. Excellent. Then I would like for us to go and click on the animator. In the animator tab, I would like for us to first create a new parameter. Make sure you've got parameters selected and hit the little plus to create a new bool. Let's give it a name. We're going to call it dead. Then in the hierarchy here. Let's put orange def just at the side of orange walk. Right click on orange walk to make a transition over to orange def. Click the little arrow here. Deselect has exit time. Open up settings. Deselect fixed duration. Then go to the conditions at the bottom here. Hit the plus to add a new condition and you can see there is our ball dead and we want it to be true. Because we're going to say that if our enemy is dead, transition into death animation. Now I would like for you to repeat this entire process for our red guy. Animation and animator. And I will see you in just a few short moments. Once everything is done, you should have something that looks like this. Our animations for both red and orange enemy and everything set up in our animator. Now let's head to the enemy HP script and apply this transition. And to do that, of course, we need to make a reference to the animator component that we are going to use. So at the top, let's set a private animator, the anim, there we go. And do not forget, we set a parameter, which was a ball. We're gonna need a ball here as well to tell us when the enemy is dead. So underneath, private bool is dead. There we go. Now, the animator component is on our parent game object, the enemy. So let's reference that in the start function. The anim equals transform dot parent dot get component. And which component? The animator, of course. There we go. That's all set. Now in the update function, 
rather than destroy the enemy outright, we're going to cancel it out for now with two forward slash so we can see the transitions take place when we hit play. Above it, let's set the ball of is dead. So when the enemy HP hits zero, is dead equals true. And of course, we're going to set the ball, that parameter in the animator, to call on the anim dot set ball. Then in the brackets here, the name of the parameter ball we set, which was dead. Then next to it, the ball is dead. There we go. Now, when we go back, hit play and test, we can now run over to the enemies. And when we hit them, well, hey, it changes to the death animation. Let's do it on this guy as well. That actually looks quite funny. There we go. We can make these more dynamic though. So let's head back into the editor. So to make the enemy deaths more dynamic, it would be cool if we had them pop off and fall off the scene. And we're going to do that by disabling the colliders. Both of them, in fact. We're going to disable the Hurtbox Collider, so the enemy falls off the stage, isn't making any collisions with the ground, and the Collider on the enemy that will kill the player to avoid any rebound double hits and losing unnecessary lives when we don't have to. So what we will need to do is reference both of these in the enemy HP script, so let's head back to it. Back in the enemy HP script now, let's go ahead and reference those two colliders we want to deactivate. Go to the top here and we'll create two private variables. The first one will be private collider2d and we'll call it parent col. This will be the parent's game object collider, which is the enemy. And the second one will be a private collider2d once again and it will be the Hurtbox Collider. So we can go ahead and call that Hurtbox Col. There we go. And of course, next we have to reference them in the start function, and we are already familiar with how to do that now. So let's do the parent collider first. So the parent col is equal to, and it's the parent game object we want to get the collider of, transform dot parent dot get component and we'll just simply put collider 2d there we go and to reference the hurtbox collider which is this game object it's normal so let's go ahead type in hurtbox collider equals get component collider 2d there we are and of course all that's left to do now is in the update function in our if statement where underneath we set the ball for the animator, type in the parent col, so the parent collider dot enabled equals false to deactivate it and do the exact same again, of course, for the hurtbox col, hurtbox collider dot enabled equals false. There we go. When we save that now and go into playtest, we shall see what happens. Now when we go over to the enemies, their animation plays, and as you saw, they fall out of the scene. Excellent. However, I'm going to play this again, not in full screen, and I want you to look carefully at the hierarchy and tell me what you notice. As I go over and kill the enemies, keep a close eye on the hierarchy and the scene view. What can you see? That's right, the enemies may be out of our scene, our camera, but they're still alive, in the scene and our hierarchy they've not been destroyed. This can cause many issues as they take up resources when they really shouldn't. Say if we had large numbers of enemies on screen, that could actually slow the game down quite a bit depending on how intensive your projects are. So we can address that by creating a little kill switch back in the enemy HP script. Now what's the kill switch going to do exactly? It's going to kill and destroy the game object after a certain amount of time has passed. And to do that, of course, as we've done them before, we write an enumerator. So at the bottom, underneath take damage, let's type I enumerator, there we go. Name it something like kill switch, if you like, like kill switch engage, one of the greatest bands of all time. And inside the kill switch, we start off with our yield statement, yield 
return new wait for seconds and in the brackets our duration let's say two so two f and once two seconds are gone it's going to destroy the parent game object which we already have right here transform.parent.game object so copy and paste that just underneath there we go and before we go and play we need to reference it and start the coroutine in our update function so start coroutine in the brackets the name kill switch there we go when we hit save and go and give it a play we will now be able to see our enemies get destroyed and removed from the scene and the hierarchy entirely there we go and if you want to change how they fall because at the minute they fall behind the level we can easily do that just by pushing back our level game object on the z-axis by one just putting it further away from the camera and then when we hit play again they'll fall in front of the game objects it looks a little better unless you wanted it that way it's entirely down to you there we go so now they fall in front there we are that looks a lot better excellent okay we'll wrap it up there for this video before we do though i'm going to leave the next video open for you guys if there's anything you want clearing up or you've experienced any issues please feel free to get in touch either here or on our twitter and instagram and i'll do my best to address them in the next video so we can go well prepared and dive straight into creating one final level for our game thank you very much for watching guys keep up the excellent work and i will see you soon take care